Hey, hey, ladies and gents, commercial photographer Tony Roseland, welcome to the studio. I know it's been a while. I was in Hawaii on vacation. When I got back from Hawaii, I was lazy. And then I had to catch up on everything that I didn't do while I was in Hawaii and then being lazy. And then this week, my kid's been out of school every day at like one o'clock for parent-teacher conferences. So I'm just trying to play catch up. I wanted to get one out so you guys wouldn't forget what I look like. Plus I haven't seen you guys in a while. So I figured what the heck, let's do a video. Today's video I think will be pretty helpful to a lot of you. Uh, I've seen this done a lot on, in images around the web and most of the time they look like ass. So I figure, let me show you how to do this the way that I do it, which I think looks pretty good. I've never had any complaints from clients. What I'm talking about is dropping in uh, screens on monitors and televisions and things like that in photos so that they look legit, all right? If you are an architecture or a real estate photographer and you shoot a conference room and there's that screen up there and it's got something on it when you capture that photo, generally it looks like ass. So I'm going to show you how I do this to make it look legit. At least I think it looks pretty good. My clients have never complained. So um, even if you're a wedding photographer and you got a shot of the bride and groom and maybe there's a screen or something in the background playing a slideshow from their engagement session or when they first met or whatever kind of shit they got going on back there and you want it to look good, this is the way that I do it. And I think that, like I said, it looks pretty good. It's not hard to do, but there are a couple steps. What I see most people do is they just grab an image, they drop it on the screen, they contort it to fit, and then boom, they're done, which looks fake as shit, and you don't want it to look fake, you want it to look legit, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna jump into Photoshop here with an image and just kind of run you through a few things that I do that I think help make it look good. So uh, without further delay, here we are in Photoshop. This is a photo I shot for a architect of a hospital operating room and it has a ton of monitors in it and I had to drop Im uh, images on the monitors so that they would look real. Obviously, I can't just have all these crazy uh, color bars on the monitors and such. So let me, um, let me merge these, group these, take this off and show you guys what it looked like. Um, Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, boom, let's turn all these on. Yeah, so that's basically what it looked like when I gave it to the client. So you can see that I've added some highlights on the monitors. Uh, I faded this one out a bit because it's being hit by direct light, which would wash it out some. This one's aiming down, so it'd be less washed out. This one over here uh, is in shadow. You can see this arm and all this stuff up here is kind of shadowed, so I added more contrast in that one. So the idea is to make them look legit, like they were actually in the scene, and this is what most people fail to adjust each of these, you know, for a scene. So um, let me let me jump into here. And this is what we started with. This is how the image was actually captured. And a couple of things about this. Typically, I like to have the monitors off whenever possible. The reason being is because uh, you'll get some bleed from whatever's on the monitors. For example, these color bars, if I were to zoom in a, a bit, you can start to see some of the color will start to bleed over on the edges. Uh, this one actually isn't too bad, but depending on how bright they are, and then you basically just have to put a hue saturation adjustment layer and desaturate around the edge so that I wouldn't have, for example, a bunch of green light pouring over onto the frame of the monitor when I'm gonna drop a totally different image on top of it. So that's reason number one, I like to have the monitors off. The second reason is that when they're off, it's just a black screen, you can get a pretty good idea of what the light uh, reflections and glare would look like on those monitors. And you can try to, A, either reduce the opacity of the image you're laying on top of it so that those uh, glares shine through and make it look more realistic, or you can reproduce those in post to make them look just like, um, 
they did naturally. So in this case, we weren't allowed to really touch anything in the room. They had all the monitors on, so I just kind of had to deal with them how they were. So uh, I, you know, they're on, and I don't think it's going to be a problem for us. Uh, in fact, I know it's not going to be a problem because I already edited this photo. But uh, let me show you some of the things to consider when you need to drop images on the scene and kind of where I start. So uh, you'll see all of these numbers or, or letters on the screens. and. What I do when I have more than one monitor in a scene, I send an image like this to the client where I'm calling out every monitor with a letter and I simply ask the client, what do you want on monitor A? What do you want on monitor B, et cetera? And then they can get back to me with an exact, um, you know, informative uh, screenshots or whatever it is that they want to put on these so that I know there's no miscommunication about what they want on each of these. And this client actually did that. So if you come up here, you'll see that on screens B, F, N, and Q, they wanted this image. And on screens C, E, and P, they wanted this image. And there's actually a lot more images they sent me because I did uh, several shots of this room. And they called out every single monitor from every angle that I shot the room. And so that was perfect. You won't always get this from your clients. When your client does not get back to you or doesn't know what they want to put on there or you're shooting a conference room or an office or something like that and they're like, I don't know what to put on the screen, usually you don't want their messy desktop. Um, even if they took a screenshot of that, it would look like crap, you know, a bunch of random icons and stuff. So what I find works really well is if you go to the company's website and just get a screenshot of their website, you can drop that in there. Usually they have no problem with that being on there because it's something that makes sense. It's very realistic that that could be on the screen in a conference room or that an employee could be on the company website logging into the intranet or looking up some sort of information or whatever. And you don't have to worry about copyright issues that way or anything with dropping something else in there that you know, you found randomly online. So uh, the company website is always a good screenshot to drop in when you don't get this kind of feedback from the client. So um, these images are plenty resolution for what we need to do. And let's see, before I jump into that, um, I'm going to turn this off. I just made these call outs so you guys could see what I send to the client. So I would send them something like this just in a JPEG and say, send it back and tell me what you want on each of these monitors. So let me come back to this one. I'm going to go ahead and delete this so it doesn't get in our way. Uh, let's work with this monitor right here. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, is pin tool this. And I am by no means a pin tool superhero because... Uh, I don't do a lot of my own editing anymore and I just am rusty. So it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. Let's just try to make somewhat of a clean selection around here. And the reason I'm using the pin tool and not the polygonal lasso tool is because I have this stupid curved thing right here. So I'm going to get this as close as I can. It's probably not going to be perfect, but that's okay. You guys uh, will get the idea. When you do this on your own, you can spend a little more time on it. So uh, let's see. That's pretty good, good enough. Uh, whenever I do a pin tool selection, I hit make selection. I always feather by either 0.3 to 0.5. It just makes it so our edge isn't quite as harsh because we want it to blend in with whatever it is that we're trying to drop this uh, new screenshot on top of. So I'm gonna create a new layer, just a new fresh blank layer, and I'm gonna fill this with black. And the reason I'm gonna fill this with black is the same as what I explained before, because when I put my image over top of this, I'm gonna drop the opacity some, and I don't want all those colored bars and things showing through. Uh, so I wanna start with a clean slate underneath so that as I drop the opacity of whatever image I put on top of this, it's not going to have stuff underlying. Now, if the screens were off and I had glare or reflections from the room on this monitor, I could maybe use that to my advantage. I'd have to see how that worked. And in which case, I may not fill this with black, but that's not the case here. We are gonna fill it with black. Looks pretty good. See that 0.5 uh, feather just made this look natural. It's not like this harsh edge along here. It actually looks really, really natural. All the way around, actually, it blends in really well with, our, with the frame of our monitor. So that's step one. Step two, I think I'm going to use this image um, and I'll just drag it over to here and drop it and it's huge. So I'm going to back out, try to keep it so you guys can see what's happening. And I will hit command T to free transform. And step one is to try to line up a single corner on this. It's usually where I start. It doesn't have to be perfect yet because we will adjust 
Then I hold down Command and I start to move each corner into place roughly where I think it should be. Holding down Command allows you to distort and skew this uh, image uh, with each corner independently. So let me get this kind of dialed in here. Uh, let's see. All right, that's close enough. Let me zoom in now. We can refine it. Yeah, see, so now we can kind of get in here and we can really get to uh, fine tune this bad boy. And, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'm going to go where I think the corner is here. I know that I'm overlapping, but if you remember, we've already got a layer that we cut out underneath and we can use that to make a mask for this. Uh, drop in. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold it there. Then we will hit command and our black layer that we put underneath, it's already cut out. You can see here our marching ants running around and we'll just hit the mask button and it automatically creates that mask for us, drops this on top. Looks pretty good. Not perfect in here. That's okay. You guys get the idea. So let me back out just a little bit and this is where most people would leave it. And I think that it looks too bright. It doesn't look natural. Looks like we dropped a screenshot on here. This one's actually mostly black with some highlights of color, but if this was a white image or something, it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be brighter than every light in the room. It's not going to look realistic at all, which is why we need to drop the opacity of this. And that's where that underlying black layer comes into play because we're not going to see through all of the bars and things. So I've dropped it to about 50%. Now, if I didn't have this black layer underneath, you see how all that stuff shines through. Now, if it was a black screen underneath with highlights and stuff, or glare from the overhead lights, this may be perfect for us. It may play into an advantage, which is what I was saying earlier. In this case, no. So we're going to start at 50% opacity. I think that looks pretty natural out of the gate. I mean, if I'm looking at some of these other monitors, that's about probably what it would look like you know, um, compared to the exposure of the rest of the room, but we're not done yet. So I'm going to create another new layer, just a blank layer. And what I'm going to do is get my gradient tool. I just hit G. I will hit D to go to default colors, which are black and white. I will hit X to switch my foreground and background color so that white is my foreground. Up here on my linear gradient, I am going from foreground to transparent. And then what I can do, it's on reverse. I don't want that. Um, then what I will do is just drag, uh, well, let me make a selection. I'm going to hold down Command and select uh, one of our previous layers so that I have a selection just around this monitor. And then I will drag a gradient, um, maybe like that. Nope, don't like that. I can drag it from this corner. That's more realistic. This is up higher. It's more in the tucked into the shadows. This part would be more exposed to the rest of the room. And then I can drop the opacity of that down too so that it looks more realistic. And I think we're, we're getting pretty good here like that. Another option, let me turn this off, hit control N to create another new layer, is to use um, the center, I don't know what this is called, center linear, I call it, I don't know, whatever. But basically you're going to create a linear gradient that spreads out from wherever you start your, your drag. So let's say this, right? And so then it puts a, a highlight on like that, which also can work. And you can drop the opacity there. And, and that can help too to make it look natural. And it doesn't have to be diagonal. Let's say we want to go more like this and drop it down. Um, and maybe that's more like what we would get as a reflection up. But that looks pretty legit. Let's just stick there for now. Um, I'm going to, that opacity is at 40%. Uh, that's okay. Maybe this other layer that we had down here with the actual screenshot can drop just a tad more, maybe 45%. Let me back out just a tad. Hit Command D to stop my marching ants. Yeah, I mean, that looks tight. That looks like it could be from the overhead lights here. It looks like a glare kind of maybe from up here on this side of the overhead lights uh, kind of bouncing off the screen. So I think that's pretty legit. And that's it. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. That little extra step is what's going to help sell the photo. And I keep using the term legit, but it's exactly what we're trying to do is make it look legit. You don't, I mean, if you don't drop the opacity, if you don't add the overlay or try to match some sort of highlight or glare, because it'd be damn near impossible to shoot this image without some sort of glare or something from the lights in, in the scene hitting those monitors. So if you don't do that, it's going to look like dog shit. It's going to be absolutely unbelievable. And 
unfortunately, that's what most people do is just drop that in there. So I think that this will help you guys sell it when you are edit editing these images and uh, pretty simple. All right, rock and roll, right? So not hard, pretty easy. It helps sell the image. It's just one of those little details that I do to the images that make them look a little bit better than maybe my competitions. And it doesn't take that long to do. It's a pretty simple technique. Basically, we're filling the monitor with black to get rid of anything that was already on the screen or any reflections or anything that may be there. Just use your brain and try to make it look legit to your brain and it will look legit to everybody else. If you drop it on there at full opacity and you know, it's just gonna look ridiculous. So. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully some of you can use that in your uh, you know, future image editing. And if you aren't following us yet, please do so. If you liked this video, give me a little thumbs up. And if you're so inclined to jump over on Instagram and follow me over there, trying to get to that 10,000 mark this year, I uh, wanna get some swipe up action on Instagram so that I can start to put direct links to our latest video on my stories. And uh, that's it.